one. Well, this is just a few videos I picked up. Well, one of them I can't show you. Yeah, I have I got three because they were cheap. But one of them will not probably be fixable. Not the fact it has a schematic in it, and I, it just needs a recap. But the way they designed it is that I can't get the chassis out of it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. It's in very nice shape. It's a shame it's probably have to be useful parts because I can't get the circuit board back in. And if you had to know, it works so poorly due to those bad electrolytic capacitors that it's not usable. And I cannot figure it. No one can figure out a way to get it out. I, there's a few people on the antique video forums that have people apparently got it out. But everyone I know couldn't figure out how to do it. And they have no information on how they just have one YouTube video and of it and that's it. So here's the first one, which this one does work, but it has a little bit more downs than what it did because a dog knocked it off the table being the usual dumb self. Yeah, luckily it's made out of wood and didn't suffer too much of a damage. Here it is, a Magnavox solid state MFM Media, which when I got the volume knob was of course, uh, I had to clean it and it's still a little scratchy. I guess I didn't clean it good enough, but it's better than what it was. And I ain't taking it apart again. For what its uses, I clean the AMFMC. The tuning capacitor is, 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 is dirty. You know, like when you tune it, you get that clacking lane and it cuts out. But when I was doing it, it was very really bad and I did this back and forth real quick, like back and forth a lot. But I can't do it on camera because I had to hold the radio, but I did it back and forth, back and forth real quick. I did that really fast. And after I did that a little bit, it cleared up. So then I saw tuning right here, it was better. It wasn't making that crackling. It's probably temporary. I probably cleaned it off. It'll probably get bad, but it's good enough. I mean, you have to fiddle with it, but after you get on a station, it sounds good. Up here, it's still pretty bad, but I can fiddle with it, and it's on AM, FM. But... It wasn't. It doesn't need new capacitors or nothing. Cause when you tune in, it's loud. It's clear. It has good bass. Everything sounds like it should new, except for the tuning thing being dirty. That's mainly the thing wrong with it. And it's real wood. Right here is a little bit of damage up here. And that spot right there wasn't new as bad. It was mainly like this. The stupid dog when he knocked it over, being I'm just angry at that dog. He did that little damage, but. It didn't, yeah, it was already had this right here and that, so it's a little rough, but if you're looking at it from the front, you really can't notice, and it's old, so it's not going to be new, but it's real wood, it's not in bad shape, and it was only six bucks, but it was after the wet damp environment, that's why the tuning capacitor is scratchy, and the bottom screw is a little bit rusty, and the controls are dirty, but it wasn't expensive, and I did, I was able to test it. Now here was on to the shame one. The Rush... AM, FM, AFC radio, which performs really bad on it, you, it would, this is the symptoms of bad capacitors, well, I know it's bad, because it had high levels of distortion, which capacitors do, it had high levels of everything, I mean, a low volume, had trouble, weak station reception on AM, FM, and so it wave, and, and, but it did, but it was working, you know what I mean, the stages were working, it's not a transistor or nothing, because I think, because you could perceive stuff, it just came in really weak, and the AFC wasn't working good, and this hat made in Japan, as you can see, it's a little, it could use some glue right here if it was good, it's, case isn't too bad, I mean, because I was seeing if I could get from the front, because I couldn't get from the back, it means it might have to be really glued a little bit, but separate with the leather case, this fake, whatever this is, it might be fake leather, but it's still very soft and everything, and not too transpeaker loss and everything, but then when you get around to the back, as you can see it, I didn't bother putting it back in, it's something like it says, has you all the information right here, if you can read that, hopefully, you can, but the thing about it is that... If you look, you can't really get it out. I tried. This thing should be flush. I can't really get it back in. I can't get out. But they give you a schematic right here and all that. But then they put, and then they get these antennas. They screw them in. But then they glue them in. So I can't get the antennas out. And then you can't. And the radio can't go forward. Like I said, it's glued in from the front. You can't pull it out the front. This whole part, it's meant to come out because of screws. And it's even got the indention here. But they glued these antennas in. So I can't get it out. So I'm afraid it's going to be used for parts. I was going to take it out and practice on my recapping. I've never recapped a video, but you got to start somewhere. And I like doing it on stuff that I didn't pay a lot of money for. But same for... It did. It would have, maybe it would have been nice to get it going, but... 
I see I couldn't get any further than that, and I was afraid of breaking capacitors and stuff bowing. I unscrew and you just can't they're glued in, and they ain't coming out of there. So that's kind of stupid. They build it with a schematic and everything, make and they pre even put the capacitors underneath where the tuning scale is. Like with tuning in on it, it goes down to about where does it go down to? Only about right here. So they don't, and so the, this was even, you could get to all this, that taking off the tuning stuff, all that. But yeah, they do that. The case was a nice, pretty nice shape for what type of case it is and everything, so I couldn't do it. And I tried for an hour. And there's an old saying, a six dollar radio, that is not, is that you might end up just, well, you can't, get, if you can't get out, you can't, I ain't that, and I asked for help and no one could help me with it. And that's how it is. I have to be shown on like a video. No one can tell me what to do. Uh, and uh, everyone t looked at it and everything, and I couldn't. But there's one thing this thing didn't come with that's kind of neat. Here are the original factory batteries. As far as they haven't leaked, these are from uh, sometime in the 70s. But there you go. There's the one battery. I, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cracked down there. I don't, uh, it hasn't leaked yet. It hasn't started yet. That's some really cool. We don't see that. And there's some that normally I think there'd be four of them. Uh, I mean, but this takes four, but uh, these were hidden. There were two on top. They probably removed, but someone never thought to look underneath. So we got two of the lost band of batteries. And I believe this set was made by Pioneer. I don't know, but it gives it out that the speaker says. Uh, Pioneer on it, and yet you can't take this apart. There's no way to do it. Well, you could probably do it if you're more experienced than I. You've taken many of these apart, but I can't. How can you take it apart when it's glued in and they hook everything together with wires? Stuff that you can't. I can desolder that and everything. That's not. I can desolder it and just have to take a picture of it. I don't mind that, but they glued it in, and that is glue. There's no way getting that out of there. Not easily, that is. So that one there is just probably gonna. I can't get it out. I'll have my, someone I know look, one more person look at it, and if they, because you can see, I tried to get out, if they can't do it, it's just going to have to be used for P-A-R-T-S, which is a really shame, I wanted to get it working, as it's nice, it's not, no, the antennas ain't working, it would be my, a really nice radio, I don't have one like this, I have a, a black Panasonic plastic one, a GE with the same, it's a same small, they ain't really big, then I have a... Well, and I have a Sony from the 80s, which is a, not a very good video. I paid 25 cents for it, it does work. But it ain't, it's not, it's, it does work. It's just not, it's not much better. It's just plastic, but I never had a leather case torn with the soap wave and everything on it. So, it's a real shame, but it'll just be useful for so There's the, look at the loss around the world reception. FM, AFC, AM, soap wave, solid state, twin speaker. ACDC powered model RE 1915-9 N. I mean N N N. Made in Japan with 10 RF and AF and RF transistors, two parallel transistors, one cascade transistor, whatever that means. I never heard of a cascade. But and, and eight diodes. I think that was, you can sometime in the 70s. But well, at least the batteries are kind of cool. Uh, I'll keep these. You don't see these any. You don't see this, this is pretty way. Well, I think to have some of these in your hands. I can show you the last radio. It's, it does all work. It's a clock radio, and it was in the same part. And there was another one similar to this, but it was a tall one with the little speaker on the bottom. It had a lid on it, and it was this tall, and it was had like this stuff on it. It was a little bit hollow and stiffle, and it was AM only, and I might go back for it since this one isn't fixable. I, can, I got that one apart. That's the only radio I've ever had that I could never get apart. In my opinion, that's a parts radio. Nothing more, nothing less. I, well, that's not what I bought it for, but it was only six bucks, so sometimes you lose one. The other radio, it's just a clock radio, and I ain't gonna bother it. Oh, yeah, but there it is. And the last thing I must show you. Fixing this Panasonic boombox I had. It took me forever to get the case back on it. Demi had he wasn't, has never take, hasn't took enough stuff apart and back together, and he ain't too good at it. Granted, I ain't that old, and I haven't done this too many years, so I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty good. I got a belt on it. And the problem is with the belt is that it does work with the new belt, but it has a little bit of round flow, but then it's got two plastic flywheels with on an auto reverse and a cheap motor when the belt might be a little tight. But when I mean round flat, it's so my you play tape in the when they sing, or even the light post singing, it sounds good. The, I mean I mean you can't hear it in his voice. 
you can hear on some light tones, but that could just be the tape. But then again, I've played that tape in my sound design. It sounds perfectly fine. I've played it in other things, so unless it just all went bad all of a sudden. But I don't mean it's bad. It's perfectly listenable. Just in the very beginning, it's got a little bit, you can hear a little bit of variation speed after the full song. Have to get some tape on it. That's how it was with the original belt, the one that was bad. It would get better as it plays. So I think the belt might be a little tight or something. Or it's not loose or something. So it's a little bit, but and again, I don't know how it was new, but when it does play, you see, you see the headphones, it sounds great. You can hear it just on some light tones. Like ding, ding, ding. You can hear a little bit of fluctuation, but it's so, I mean, it's just so minor that when you listen to music or something, you really don't hear it, and we, I, I did have it right here with the speaker, with reasons there's no stereo here, because originally I had this as a line-in jack on the back. I had the speaker here and here, and I did take, and I played a tape, and it got jammed because of the belt being bad, and it wouldn't let me get the tape out. I had to play with the pause control and everything, and got, and got it out, and it all eventually worked. After, and I put a new belt in, and all the reverses and everything, and I cleaned the record place, which so I got channel. So even though it's not playing... As good as pop might have been new, it might have a little bit of a low, but it is, I didn't prove it. It's actually, you can sell that thing as working, because it is working now. And that's what my pen, but that radio, the speaker's detached, so I had one here, and one on my Wii. And the machine's set here, and on my DVD player, this is an audio out jack. I had it through these cables into the back, and the reason I didn't hook it back up after I fixed it, well, thanks a lot, Nintendo. Those, do you think those controllers grow on trees? I have a little with that thing later on, but the uh, reason is I was looking for concert media, so I had put so it was something put on Facebook and stuff, so I found one. But now I haven't found one. But and when I was looking, so it was misspelled in a way or something, because so someone put, said tape deck on it. Not so when it gave the people the impression I wanted a stereo system in a cabinet, like a, from the '80s something. That's not what I was looking for. Something from the late. Early, early 70s, like 19, I don't say no later than 75, but mainly from the 60s, like a Magnavox Astrosonic console. But since I got this, someone gave there was something instead that it was a, when they, since it was a misunderstanding, but someone had something they were giving to me. It's a Sony machine with the, from the 80s, really nice looking. Hopefully it will all work still and oh, I can get it working because it says it was lightly used, almost never said it was used very little and you can it shows. I haven't had it got a real while to get it, so I get it. But it has the, on those cassette decks it has like the electric buttons like like this v, like what a VCR has, a 5 CD change radio and tower speakers, like full speakers, which I think I'll have to put one here because it even ha and also a, a record player, but not a cheap one. One of those like that's this is like a professional thing you'd buy back from Sony in the eighties. It wasn't it wasn't cheap. I mean, you paid a pretty penny for it. So and since it was free, only a dummy would pass something up like that. If it's Sony and it's from the eighties and it's got a really nice, almost looks like a person grade turntable with all five CD change and and tower speakers, which one will probably be there on if I can. If I can I move the TV, if I have to, I'll put one right here for good stereo separation. That will be the stereo phone here. And I have a yolk in the basement, which is a yolk yuck. But it, the radio works, and I don't throw stuff away like that because I don't make it anymore. Somebody might want it because it's in very nice cosmetic shape. It almost looks new. And I can tell you the reason why it looks new. And that reason is... After you played it a few times, you learned that it was a piece of junk and sounded awful. And I don't mean it's got bad capacitors. I mean, that thing just sounds tinny and flat. And a sound design from 1988 makes it it's better built. <laughs> yeah. So tomorrow, I'm going to take it to the antique store because I'm allowed to sell stuff at the one in Parkersburg, West Virginia and all that. And I want to, and I can sell stuff there. I'm going to take it and resell it. I won't get my forty dollars out of it, but I have to sell it. At, I'm probably going to sell it at a loss, which I don't want to do. But I don't want it. So you have to lose my speakers and own this manual. But somebody might like it, and hopefully they'll suck when they buy it due to its looks and not its performance. Because <laughs> that's 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 because I, uh, I know that can happen. Because you're looking at a guy who did already. I right hear you're talking with them. But I'll send that off, and I that sound design living room, I'm going to keep it. Then when I get a console, like from, I really like Magnavoxes from the 60s. It's just That's my favorite. I do like Zenith and some other ones, but just something about a Magnavox I just want. Because 
Now, Yamaha yeah, had one. It was from the 70s. It's got the plastic on front, but it's held up pretty well. It's just as good as I remember it. Granted, it's got it's not in the best condition, but it's got some scratches and stuff, but it works, except for the record player on 8-track, but it sounds phenomenal. It does not need any new capacitors. I mean, that thing there, so I hooked it up to the auxiliary to my cousin's phone, because he didn't, he, he didn't know it had aux, but he said, where's the thing? Turns out it was on the bottom, so you had to pick the console radio up to do it. And we plugged in, and it was sounded so good. It was the best sounding stereo ever heard. And that was from the 70s stereo system. The Sony might, might sound better, but this is something about a Magnavox Astrosonic that I want, and I'll get it working. I wouldn't have sold my fifth tank in my grandmother clock if I wasn't serious about getting one. Mm -hmm. And when I do get one, well, this computer and everything on this computer will, and the desk will go bye bye, and this will be the place for the console. It should, one should fit right here. It'll be big, but. And this thing here, I think, has a bad too, because it's, there's no electrolytics. There is one that could have a bad. It just, the way it's acting, has weak FM reception, and that tube is original, and every other radio pad has it, that tube changed, so I really don't know, but I can't really continue until I check the tube, because I just, until I get a tube tester, I can't, but I have a sneaky hunch, and when I got it, there was a little crack right here. It goes down right here on the, oh, right here on the top. It wasn't that when I got it, I blamed someone for roughhousing it. Other than that, it was free. So I have nothing to lose, but I want to fix it, and it doesn't have, it does have some crackling. It's really dirty inside, probably has some dirty tube sockets, because it ain't super mica disease, because if I'm correct, super mic, because if it was, it's, I think if you turn the volume all the way down, it wouldn't matter, but it's not, it could be, if, if it ever ran a radio or something this time, get that. I don't think it is, though. I think it's through two sockets. It's making the crackling like a tube's dirty. It's intermittent. It could be them doing that. It really could be. But it just doesn't sound too easy because you can turn the volume all the way down. Unless I misunderstood what silver micro disease is. And it can, it'll be that way no matter what the volume is. But it's just a little crackle. It could be that or it just could be dirty tube sockets. So I'll clean the tube sockets because it uses micro pin tubes that are known for acting. Because... This by watching people fix them and the sounds that it's making sounds like dirty tubes and it does it with vibrations and stuff. So it could be those things. And uh, possibly not, but that's mainly all I wanted to talk about. But same that the old Voss is gonna be parted out, but if you can't get it out, you can't really fix it. That's all folks.